So what is uh, uh, exhibition in French uh, uh, 18th century? It, those exhibitions uh, were organized by the Academy of uh, Arts, the Royal Academy of Arts, since the end of the 17th century. And the picture you will see in here is the picture of uh, the 67, 1767 exhibition. The Salon were organized every two years. So uh, for the period I'm interested in, the period when where um, uh, Diderot wrote his compte rendu, his critical uh, uh, report for the correspondence littéraire, uh, the period is the 60s. So he began in 59 and uh, he, uh, he uh, uh, increased his work to uh, 69 and afterwards he quite, uh, uh, there, there was quite a lack of interest for that. So he, uh, he added a few uh, reports in the, for the correspondence there, but they are not so interested, interesting as the previous ones. Uh, what is this exhibition and why is it so particular, so outstanding in the 18th century Europe? There are very few public exhibitions at, uh, in that period. Uh, the, it's very difficult for the common people to see pictures. Pictures cannot be reproduced, as you know, uh, uh, only by uh, uh, engravings. Engravings are expensive and, uh, and rare. And uh, you, there are no public museums. The first public museum in France is the Museum of Luxembourg. It's a very small museum, the actual Luxembourg Palace uh, in the Luxembourg Garden in Paris, uh, the Senate, it's a French Senate now. And this uh, small museum it opens in 1750, and it opens one day a month. And uh, where can you see pictures uh, in France in the 18th century? Most of all, you see them in the churches. So the religious pictures are very important to form the public taste. But you must uh, never forget that the Royal Academy of Art is the Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture. And sculpture is a very important part of the common public culture. And where can you see sculptures in the 18th century France? In the gardens, in the public parks and gardens, where you can't see flowers because it's not a French taste, but you can see statues. So uh, this uh, uh, drawing uh, I, uh, I show you is a drawing by um, uh, Gabriel de Saint-Aubin, and it's quite, quite exceptional because Gabriel de Saint-Aubin was a maniac of drawings. He was drawing everything everywhere. And uh, uh, he's the only one at that period who make a drawing of this exhibition. And you can understand why it is called Salon. It is called Salon, you, this word is um, ambiguous in French. Salon usually means uh, the uh, private places where philosophers, where elegant persons were talking of very elegant things. But Salon here doesn't mean that absolutely. Salon uh, is called uh, like that for very practical reasons. This place, it's the name of the place. This place is in the Louvre Palace. As you know, the king left the Louvre Palace in uh, uh, the end of the 17th century for Versailles. And the Louvre is empty, but full of paintings, the royal collection. So Louvre was devoted to the Royal Academy of Arts when it was created at the end of the 17th century. It means that the, arti the French artists of the 18th century, who were very poorly paid, were very richly uh, located because they had lofts in the Louvre Palace. It was the most interesting in being an academician in 18th century. 
Uh, and their, their uh, first duty was to exhibit their um, uh, opuses, their paintings, and uh, works of art uh, every two years in one uh, place of the Louvre, publicly open, the exhibitions were free. Uh, uh, so everybody could enter it. And uh, every, uh, pay, all the paintings were set in only one room. This room is quite special. It's, it is the room where you arrive when you have to visit the museum. Where you arrived, I should say, because now there is a pyramid and everything is different. But before the pyramid, when you enter the Louvre, <laughs> Uh, you enter through a huge sta uh, staircase. The staircase you can see here. It's not uh, the the actual staircase is not this one. It was changed because it was uh, uh, it was not practical. This staircase is uh, taking a quarter of the place of the whole salon. So so there is a very little place for the people to uh, to sit inside the room. To, you arrive here, and from that salon, you could go to the several parts of the Louvre uh, Palace. So this place is strategical. And uh, uh, as you see, there is no waste of empty places on the walls. It's, uh, uh, it's not the actual way of exhibiting uh, uh, collections and painting. Now, you, uh, the first... Uh, uh, purpose is to um, to uh, make uh, uh, important every piece of your collection. So one painting is in a, is set in a big white wall, and you have in, if it's a temporary exhibition, you have a lot of explanations. Here there is no place even for the title of the paintings, even for the name of the artists. So how could you manage? to understand who is who and what is what. You could buy, entering the salon, you could buy, uh, it was, the entrance was free, but you could buy for a very low price a small book called the Livret. And the Livret was the list of all the paintings uh, and uh, uh, pieces of art. You see the sculptures in the tables in the first uh, uh, in first place, you could uh, you could see the list of them. The list was not uh, established according to the real place. So in the, the order, it was complicated to manage it. Uh, the the order of the uh, paintings was not the order uh, on the livret was not the order of the paintings on the wall, because the order of the paintings on the wall was. Um, uh, established for practical reasons to uh, occupy as uh, uh, efficiently as uh, we could the, uh, the space. Uh, the order was hierarchical in the livret. Hierarchical, the first paintings in the list were the painting from, it was artist by artist, it was uh, the artist who occupied the highest levels inside the academy the professors, and, what they, what, uh, and those who were called officers, who were the most eminent uh, academicians. After the academicians, you had the agreed, les agréés. It means the artist who uh, um, uh, presented one uh, outstanding picture to the academy and were agreed to exhibit in the salon. So they were the agreed. So there are two big categories. First, the, the academicians. Inside the academicians, the professors and then the others. And after them, the agreed. This is the hierarchy of the libre. But this hierarchy doesn't take place in uh, uh, the real exhibition. In the real exhibition, the biggest problem is to place the biggest paintings, and then to set all the small ones around. So as you can see for the 67 uh, exhibition uh, of the 67 uh, year, uh, the two big paintings are those two ones. 
It's the miracle des ardents by Doyen. The miracle des ardents, the miracle of the uh, ardent is a, a disease. A, a, a disease which occurred in Paris in the 12th century and miraculously stopped by the intervention of Saint Geneviève. Uh, the second one is the Prédication de Saint Denis. Saint Denis is supposed to be uh, the saint who introduced uh, the uh, Catholic faith in France in the 5th century. Those two pictures was, were commended by uh, uh, Curé Marduel for the uh, Church of Saint Roch, which is nearby, uh, at uh, 500 meters of the Louvre, The Church of Saint Roch is the church for uh, the where the artists go. So it's a church where the uh, uh, the people are not very uh, they don't believe very deeply in God. So they need a lot of theater to believe, and those are the theatrical uh, devices to compel them to the church. And if they uh, make the uh, paintings by themselves it works better. And uh, uh, when you have set the, uh, and this, this one is a political painting uh, commemorating the peace with uh, uh, the Germans and the English. Uh, and in the sides, you have the less uh, important paintings uh, uh, according to another hierarchy, which is the hierarchy of genre. Uh, first of all, you have the uh, um, uh, history paintings. Those are religious and, histo and political, historical ones are historical paintings. So they are in the front of uh, uh, the, in the front wall. And in the side walls, you have the landscapes. Uh, the landscapes are in the lower part of the hierarchy of genre. Uh, for instance, uh, here you have a landscape, here you have a bacchanal, a bacchanal is not exactly a landscape, but it's, uh, in, it's not a historical uh, uh, painting uh, either. So that is uh, the, uh, the whole uh, organization. Now I'd like to show you one painting, so I'm leaving exhibition, To en for entering in one specific painting, a painting by a famous landscape painter who is called Vernet. And uh, I explain why I'm uh, switching from one to the other. Uh, I'm using the uh, Ut Pictura 18 database, uh, which you can find on internet. Eh? It's uh, this site. So all the pictures I show, you can find it uh, on the internet. You just uh, type Ut Pictura 18 and you'll find me and my sites. And then you can, uh, uh, you can type here what you need. For instance, Salon de 1767. And you see just what I was showing to you uh, previously. It's a, a smaller image, but I have an advertising uh, in a few minutes to explain you how to get the wider one. And, but this is teasing. Uh, uh, so, now I'll show you, uh, I'll show you, because I'm from Aix and Marseille, I show you a little bit of my place. This is Marseille in the 18th century. This painting is, uh, uh, was, uh, is part of a huge comment uh, Vernet received from the king. He was ordered to paint all the arbors of uh, the French arbors of France. The purpose was to make, uh, to save money, as usual. Uh, the French was uh, uh, in war with uh, uh, England during all the 18th century. The, con uh, the contest was about the colonies, mainly the Canada, but uh, not only the Canada, the Louisiana. And uh, if uh, uh, King uh, 
Louis XV had been more clever, uh, all the America would speak French now. <laughs> it's a pity. And I would, I, I would make, I would make, and what about Trump? And uh, so uh, I'm coming back to uh, uh, the French uh, internal uh, affairs. Uh, so uh, uh, Louis XV uh, could not afford to build uh, enough military ships to fight English. So he decided uh, poli politic of communication instead of military politic. And the politic of communication was to show how powerful our French arbors are. And uh, to, uh, uh, to argue for that, uh, to comment uh, pictures of all the arbors of uh, France showing the places where ships could be built. And uh, it uh, occurred uh, to be much cheaper than to really build the ships. And Vernet uh, had the chance to receive this comment. Uh, uh, and uh, he started to uh, paint all the, the arbors, beginning from the south, because he was coming from uh, Roma. And so he started with Toulon, and he turned all around, and he uh, ended with Dunkerque in the north of France. The problem of being paid was another problem. Uh, he was uh, uh, very, uh, it was very difficult to be paid, and he had to argue for each arbor. And uh, the argument was, uh, I can't... Uh, uh, you want me to show all the important buildings of this arbor, but they are not exactly in the same place. I need two or three paintings. And the answer was, you will have money only for one. Do as you want, but you can't, you must show all the important buildings in one painting. All this is important because it explains to you why the sky is so important. And the buildings are so small, because they have to be, all of them, in only one painting. It means that the, uh, the, the places, the places has to expose what is important and powerful in the harbour. What is important here in Marseille is the place where you ship, you build the ships, this place, the Arsenal. Uh, this building doesn't, more, doesn't anymore exist. And uh, uh, I, if I can add a personal comment, um, the presidency of my university is somewhere here. Uh, but it doesn't have any incidence in the present lecture. Uh, so, uh, what you can see here is that this harbour is very busy. Everybody has something to deal with somebody uh, in this harbour. They are all very occupied. There are several occupations. It's full of activity. The activity is what is at stake uh, in that place. And this activity is exactly, in the formal point of view, the same kind of occupation of the space as the activity of the visitors of the salon. The uh, organization of the space is exactly the same organization as the organization of the exhibition. The exposition of the arbor is uh, organized in the same way as the exhibition of the salon. This is the whole purpose of my lecture, to show you that uh, exhibition, which is new in France, there were no public exhibition at such a scale before the uh, opening of the Royal Academy. And even the Royal Academy opened uh, in the end of the 17th century, but those exhibitions of the Salon became famous in the 30s of the 18th century. And they became uh, regular every two years, only in the 50s, before it was more erratic. So, uh, it's new. This uh, uh, 
the design of a space, of a public space for exhibition of painting is a new idea. And the public character of it is a new idea. And this uh, influenced deeply the, organiz the internal organization of the paintings. As such a painting, such a painting was not supposed to occupy the highest place in the hierarchy of genre, because it's only a landscape. It's, in, it's not a historical painting as a mythological one or a religious one. It's not designed for a church. It's not designed for a palace where you will sing the glory of the king and his ancestor. But it doesn't mean it has not a political meaning. That's why I explained you why, in, what, in which circumstances Vernet was ordered to paint those uh, paintings. They have a political pur purpose, but it's not the same. It's not the same way to show it. And uh, to show this uh, uh, political power, the mean which is used is not the uh, mean of glorification, but it's the mean of exposing activities. The exposition of activity comes from the uh, exhibition as a new device of showing representation. This is the, uh, the general idea. Now, uh, I, uh, the problem is that uh, this kind of uh, organization of space uh, makes a huge revolution if you compare it to the traditional way of painting uh, in the classical uh, uh, teaching of uh, uh, painting in France. The center of uh, uh, the focus on the painting is, and uh, all the readings uh, you had to, to read for before today were in that sense. It was theatrical. The painting was organized around a stage. The stage is the semiological way of uh, organizing the connection between the representation of an artistic subject and the political purpose. There is a deal between them, and this, the, uh, the medium for that is the theatrical stage. And here, there is no theatrical stage anymore. That's a big shift. So how painters and how the public could uh, manage this huge shift during the 18th century? This shift is not uh, uh, very visible. It, when you don't know a lot of uh, art, of history of art, you have the impression that all the classical painting is lasting until French Revolution, and it's all the same. And after that, you have the Impressionist. But if you look in the details, it's much more complicated. And a lot of changes occurred before it was really visible at the first glance. And this difference of organization of space is part of it. So now I show you how uh, uh, the pain painters dealt uh, with uh, uh, the theatrical organization of painting as a scene within a stage and the ex exhibitional way of organizing the painting, the painting with activities. And I start um, I start with not this one, but this one. Yes. I start with a painting which was not exhibited in the salon, but was very important for my favorite for Diderot, and is connected uh, with it. This painting is a, a, a discovery, so I, I'm very glad to uh, show it to you here. Uh, this painting was supposed to be lost 
uh, uh, till a few years ago when uh, it appeared in Christie's and was sold, but was uh, taken in photograph. The, uh, and uh, uh, what, what is this painting? This painting Susan, uh, represents Susanna and the elders, and uh, it was uh, uh, part of the collection of the Duc d'Orléans. The Duc d'Orléans had the most important private collection in France during the 18th century. This collection was uh, set in the Palais Royal. The Palais Royal is the big palace just nearby the Louvre, in front of the Louvre. The Palais Royal still exists now, and it's the place of the Conseil d'État. And uh, the Palais Royal is a, a U, is organized in a U. Now the, the U is closed, it's a no. Uh, and uh, inside, inside the palace, you have a public garden, you can uh, still walk in. This place was very hot in 18th century. It was the place where you, can, you could buy pornographic books, that are interesting for artists who lived just nearby. And it was a place where you can buy the services of prostitutes. And it is a place where you can discuss philosophy and very uh, high-leveled uh, uh, opinions on different uh, kinds of things, including sexual ones. <laughs> uh, this place of the Palais Royal is a place uh, where is uh, imagined the conversation between Diderot and Rameau's nephew in the Neveu de Rameau. It's a place uh, uh, Diderot loved to walk in. And uh, so the, the, it is that garden, w which was larger than it is now, because uh, in the, um, there, there is now a gallery around the garden, and this gallery did not exist. So it means the garden was larger. Uh, so uh, in the buildings of the palace, was uh, set the biggest private collection of paintings. Diderot, when he started to uh, write his compte rendu uh, of the salon, had not uh, any artistic culture, and he wanted to see pictures of any kind to build his own culture. That's so he wanted to, uh, to visit those collections. And he had a close friend, Montami, uh, uh, who was an int uh, a manager, kind of a manager of the Duc d'Orléans. He managed all, all the, uh, the stuff with the, the room and the entries of the palace. So by his friend Montami, on the evening in the dark, he could visit this gallery of uh, uh, Duc d'Orléans. And uh, he... Uh, picked there several uh, examples of what are the uh, masterpieces of European painting. <coughs> and among them, there was this painting. Why it was lost? The gallery uh, of Duc d'Orléans was sold during the revolution. All the uh, paintings were uh, spread out in the world and most of them disappeared. Disappeared doesn't mean they were destroyed, it means only their owner didn't declare they have it to have, have, to, to have not to pay taxes, of course. But by chance, they die sometimes, <laughs> and paintings are revealed to the public. So why Diderot was interesting by this painting? Uh, uh, I hope you remember the history of Susanna, which is from the B B Bible, from the book of David. Uh, Susanna is taking a bath in, his, in her garden after her period. It's a religious bath. But she has two old neighbors very interested in her nudity. You can see them uh, uh, on the backside. And they blackmail her. They say, if you don't sleep with me, with us, 
will, uh, will tell to the judge, you have a lover and you'll be sentenced to death. But Susanna uh, is a very virtuous wife. So she's, a, she's married, huh? she's not uh, uh, a virgin, and, uh, but she's very virtuous. So she refuses uh, to sleep with the, the elders, and this is the gesture of, his, uh, uh, of her denial. You don't have, you, you must not see my nudity. So she hides her nudity with hair which is very rare because usually she hides her nudity with uh, uh, clothes. And here is, it's with hair, which is much more uh, sexy, <laughs> I, I must say. The problem is, and that's what uh, interested Diderot, the problem is, is that when, while she's hiding from the elders who are on the ba backside, she's exposing herself to the beholder, to us. It means we are uh, a kind of, uh, in, we are invited inside the pictures to see her nudity, which is very interesting for us, very attractive. And at the same time, we can uh, occupy the moral place and say, how dirty are those elders who want to do uh, dirty things with that poor girl and we, are, we agree with morality. It's bad, but we agree with morality and we agree with sex because uh, it's, we have the entirety of uh, her nudity for free. <laughs> and it's even better than it because we see much more than the elders can see. They can't see anything because uh, uh, everything is hidden uh, um, both by uh, this little balustrade, uh, little wall, and by the, the, the air. But for us, there is not very much hiding. So we are inside the picture with the elders, but we are outside the picture uh, to denounce the elders. This uh, um, position is ambiguous. And uh, uh, I'd like to, uh, to um, deepen the, the, the reflection about it. Uh, if, if you see this problem from the theatrical point of view, this painting is a stage in the sense that the central uh, part of the picture uh, is uh, uh, organized as if nobody could see what's going on inside. Inside this place, here, nobody can see it. It's the loom. <laughs> and the uh, chastity of Susanna is uh, guaranteed by the fact that no one can see what's going on inside. But obviously, everybody can see everything. So it's a lure. It means that it has to exclude the beholder to man maintain the theatrical organization of the painting, but it includes the uh, uh, beholder, however, to uh, organize the exhibition of Susanna. The exhibition of Susanna is not theatrical. It's paradoxical because you, at the first glance, you could uh, uh, assume that what is, what is related to exhibition is theatrical. But you have to remember that the, organi the classical organization of the theatrical stage is uh, grounded on the fact that the beholder is excluded from, from the stage. For instance, uh, it was absolutely uh, prohibited for an actor in the stage to address directly to the beholder. It doesn't mean that they never did it. But when, uh, on the contrary, they did it all the time. But at, 
every time they did it, it was a transgression. And the pleasure of the beholder was to be part of a transgression. Here, it's not a transgression. It's organized within the painting as a, um, a inclusion of the beholder showing that, that he should be excluded, but not he is excluded, the, the elders. The elders take the part of the exclusion. The elders take the part of exclusion, although the uh, uh, elders are the ones who actually are inside the, pain, the picture. And we take the part of inclusion, though actually we are outside the painting. So everything is very intricate and very complicated to uh, organize. I uh, go now to... Uh, so this is the model, but this is, it's uh, 17th century. Now I go to... What, excuse me? And also the look. She's looking at the viewer. She'll, she's looking at the viewer, and uh, Diderot is absolutely hypocrite, and she, he says that she doesn't see us, because it's... Uh, uh, it's our interest to imagine that she doesn't see us bec because if she sees us, she is immodest and uh, uh, exhibitions be exhibition becomes uh, to be uh, immoral. So she's seeing us, but nobody has to uh, notice it, <laughs> though it's part of the pleasure. So, uh, but it, th this is the way it works. The deal, when the deal between the stage and the exhibition works. But in the 18th century, it doesn't work works as well uh, as it used to be in the previous century. So now I show you the painting uh, uh, um, in the 65 Salon. Who, uh, which Diderot saw, and about which he refers to, th to this one. So it's a bit complicated, but uh, uh, you'll see that. So this one is 17th century, now 18th, the, uh, the very one of the Salon. Mm So actually what you see is not the real painting because the, this painting is not lost but uh, uh, it has a, it occurred uh, a, an, an issue. Uh, this painting is located in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg but uh, during the 19th century it was, uh, oh, I don't know in English, the enroulé, rolled. it was rolled and now we can't, and it were, it, it became dry, and now we can't open it again. So they have it uh, in the uh, in, they have it, but they can't uh, exhibit it. By chance, a Russian engraver uh, engraved it in the 19th century. So we know uh, how uh, what it looks like through the uh, the engraving. Uh, here do, you can see how Van Lo transformed the previous operative device uh, of uh, Susanna and the elders. Uh, Susanna, uh, you, you have not uh, the, the elders on one side, Susanna in the middle, and the beholder on the other side, as we had previously. The, the elders are uh, um, uh, set in the both sides uh, of uh, Susanna, which, who is uh, sitting in the center. This means that you can't, uh, to enter into the private place where Susanna is, <coughs> you have to go to pass through the elders. The elders envelop Susanna. It means the space is progressively, the internal theatrical space is progressively closing up, closing uh, inside. And there is no outside anymore. 
if you see now uh, the stuff, the cloth, you can see that there is a continuity between the elder on the left, who actually is on the right, because you, you know that the engraving reverses all the places. So it, the real rolled up uh, um, painting, uh, you, you have to imagine in, in the, the other side. But anyway, it's the same thing. So there is a continuity by the stuff from the elder on the left to the S S Susanna and to the elder on the right. It's all, all is connected. And it is connecting by what? It is connecting by the fact of touching. The fact of touching is, uh, means there is not any more distance between, there is no barrier, this famous fourth wall, uh, which organizes the theatrical space, is not working here because of that continuity, which is a continuity of touching. Everything is touched, which means that the beholder is invited to touch as well. And it's so nice when you touch an attractive woman. This is the message of this painting. This means that when you see uh, this painting, the relationship between the stage and the painting is not so obvious as it used to be in the previous one. Uh, second, uh, second thing is uh, the gesture uh, of the two elders. If you see, if you look at the, the elder on the uh, left, he's showing something. What is he showing? It's the black man. He's telling the black man, if you don't sleep with us, I tell the judge and you'll be sentenced to death. On the uh, uh, right side, it's not a question of speaking. It's a question of acting. He is uh, um, investing uh, the Susan Susanna, and he is ready to be the first to go in. <laughs> so, in the one side, you have a um, uh, verbal, uh, uh, verbal understanding of uh, the representation. There is, uh, is the, the gesture of the elder on the left means that there is an equivalence between the uh, discourse of the elder and the show of the painting. The painting shows what the elder has to say. But if you see on the right side, there is no discourse anymore. The, uh, the elder is acting. He is in the middle of an activity. It's not really an action in the hero heroical sense of uh, action. It's not the action of a heroic uh, scene of a historical painting. It's an activity. Activity is the lowest understanding of what action is. Activity is what you can notice in the arbor. Activity is disseminated because he is beginning some kind of activity, but he will not be the, f the, the only one. He will share with his companion. This is the idea of the thing. It means the scene is split into different ways of uh, representing, among which the way, the, the discursive way of, of representing is only one between other, others. And the visual part of, exhibi of exhibition is uh, competing with the discursive one. And this is the, uh, the symptom of those important changes. It comes to some uh, exaggerations, and I show you an exaggeration. This painting, a very, very large one, it's 
is exhibited in the Louvre and very difficult to see because it's in the uh, top of, a, of a, a huge wall and you have to, uh, to see it through uh, glasses <laughs> so because uh, it's, uh, it's too uh, high in the wall. It shows uh, the running of uh, Atalanta and Hippomenes. Uh, Atalanta is a girl here. She's a very she's a sportswoman, and she doesn't want to be married. So she asks to her father uh, to uh, compete with all the young men who would come to, to race with all the young men who would like to marry her before marrying. If they win the race, they, they can marry Atalanta, but if they lose, they, they will be executed. So you have to uh, uh, think a lot before racing because uh, there is a risk. <laughs> so uh, Hippomenes, uh, uh, who is in love of Atalanta, as every young man in the city, because she is very pretty uh, and very difficult to obtain, which is uh, always a reason to fall in love. Uh, uh, Hippomenes uh, thinks he needs the help of a god, which is clever. <laughs> so he asks to uh, Venus to give him some golden apples from the garden of uh, Hesperides. Hesperides, I don't know exactly. Uh, uh, and uh, he, the, Venus gives him three of those apples. So the race is beginning, and uh, uh, at every time Atalanta is winning uh, Hippomenes, he drops an apple. She's very curious, very excited, excited uh, at the idea of obtaining one of those golden apples, so she, take, she takes a little time to, uh, uh, take, to pick up the apples dropped by Hippomenes. And by that way, Hippomenes wins. And she can marry uh, Atalanta. Unfortunately, at the end of the story, is not so happy because he uh, um, forgets to thank Venus which is very susceptible, and uh, who is very susceptible, and uh, uh, Venus uh, 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 sentences him to death, so he dies horribly uh, in a hunt. <laughs> but this is the day of his victory. And uh, 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 at the first glance, you have all the uh, uh, ingredients of uh, uh, a perfect uh, stage. The racing place is the theatrical stage. The beholders on the, the back side are just at the same place as the elders in the Susanna and the elders uh, painting. And uh, we are taking the place of the uh, spectators uh, inside the picture. So the inside and the outside is absolutely played uh, well. But Diderot notices a problem. The problem is the position, or I should say the exposition, or more the exhibition of Hippomenes. Diderot said he's sure he's going to win, and he shows off a little too much. He, he's not just running. He's saying, yes, I am the one who has won. Uh, he is like a dancer, uh, Diderot says, who is uh, making a, a, an extra turn after the public has applauded. He is showing up, and this is not supposed to happen in a painting. There is too much exhibition. And this is very interesting because it shows us that the exhibition is the way the painting is going to, and at the same time, uh, it, uh, uh, it encounters uh, a resistance of the public. Uh, we, uh, we, we should not see things like that. We see those things in the, the opera. It means in the uh, theatrical place. 
But what we see in that theatrical place is an extra. Is, is this precise transgression I was talking of uh, um, a few minutes ago. And uh, uh, it can't be the internal uh, designed part of the composition of the painting. This is the problem. And I think I do have time for just sure. one painting, the, f sure, yes. the funniest one. And uh, I show you another funny, uh, funny one. Um, my last uh, example. Uh, this one is uh, Mer Mercury in the center, Hersey and her sister Agloros uh, in uh, uh, the middle of an action. So uh, they, uh, this painting was exhibited in the Salon of 1767. Lagrenet uh, is a young painter. Uh, he is uh, very talented and he works a lot, perhaps too much. It means he makes so many, many paintings that they turn into uh, looking all the same. He has no time to uh, imagine new patterns, new compositions. And this is uh, the problem of that painting. Her, uh, Mercury in the center is a god, and he fell in love of a very attractive woman, Herse, on the left side. But the problem is that Herse has two sisters, among which uh, the younger one, Agloros, and uh, the, uh, in the palace, they, the three of them live in the palace of their father, and uh, all it is uh, is from uh, uh, Ovidius Metamorphosis. Uh, uh, the, uh, the rooms, the bedrooms, are uh, disposed uh, so that to enter Herse's room, Herse's bedroom, you have to go through Agloros one. And Agloros is a little bit jealous that her sister was chosen by Mercury and not her. So Mercury proposes to her that if she allows uh, the god to go through her room and uh, say nothing to the father and uh, to uh, go quietly to Erce's room, she will obtain her weight in gold. And Agloros uh, accepts. But <coughs> as soon as she accepted, the goddess of envy and jealousy goes uh, to her and says, you don't, it, it's not a good deal. You <laughs> could have obtained more. What you have to obtain is to sleep with Mercury, which is much better than uh, all the weight, your weight in gold. <laughs> so you have to argue something. Here you see the proposal of Mercury to Herse, who uh, waited for him in her bed. Uh, the bed is a little bit complicated. The construction, uh, uh, Lagrone had, had no time to think of. And uh, uh, splitting between the two uh, rooms uh, is complicated too. It's this balustrade. Uh, I never saw two uh, rooms like that, uh, splitted with a balustrade. <laughs> But it's very convenient for uh, the operative device uh, of uh, a theatrical stage with an inner place and an outer place. So uh, the curtain is the curtain of the bed, and uh, it is supposed to be closed to uh, uh, ensure the privacy of the couple. But Agloros is curious and jealous, so she opens in the backside the curtain, Mercury and Erce are very occupied, so they are not supposed to notice that. And she uh, takes the place of the beholder who sees something he should not see and uh, uh, showing us the fact that the, the exclusion, uh, which is uh, the um, constitutive uh, uh, organization of the stage. She sees her, her, uh, though she should not see, and for, at the same time, we see it uh, though no, nobody should see what happens in Herse's room. So uh, he makes his proposal. 
all the uh, compte rendu of uh, Diderot is based on the fact that uh, uh, Mer Mercury doesn't, doesn't do what he should do at that place at that time. What Diderot should have done with such a beautiful lady. When you are in such a position, uh, in such a situation, you have not to argue and to make a discourse and patati and patata. You have to act. <laughs> and uh, this is the time to do the thing. And Diderot says, I would like so much to touch this leg, this chest, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this girl, and uh, to embrace her. And what is he doing with his hands? <laughs> hands are not uh, uh, supposed to, to, uh, uh, to do such things. And what he see, uh, 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 notices here, he notices the fact that Lagrené has to deal with a theatrical way of painting. In the theatrical stage, you don't sleep with the girls. It's not supposed to occur in a theater place. In a theatrical stage, when you want to explain that a man is in, is in love of a woman, he makes a discourse. And this, uh, these are the, the signs of the discourse. And those signs of discourse are in contradiction with the scene, the scene which would, uh, uh, which, which should uh, expel all those discursive things to go to the act. And the problem is uh, um, uh, deepened by the fact of by, by a problem with the left leg of Essay. Uh, when uh, Diderot seems to have finished his compte rendu, he suddenly shouts. He shouts because he says, I didn't notice. It's, it's false because he, he had all the time to notice everything. I didn't notice a huge problem in the very middle of this painting. The left leg is not connected to the body of Hersey. Yes, she is a little bit too vested. She, but if you imagine the nudity of Hersey uh, uh, showing out, putting out her clothes, this leg is, is going perhaps here, perhaps here, but not here. <laughs> so there is a lack. There is a lack in the very focus of what is interesting in this painting, which is the sex of Hersey. She must have a huge sex <laughs> between, uh, uh, behind his clothes. So uh, 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 we must assume that Mercury is ready to go out taking her left leg as a gift and uh, leaving her without a leg in the bed. <laughs> that is the big problem. And this problem is a problem of the connection between the exhibition way of painting and the exposition way of painting. And I end with that. Thank you. Thank you, sir.